So No Man's Sky is a pretty big game, it's about 3 years old, it had a ton of huge updates and I get this question a lot, what do you even do in a game such as this? No Man's Sky is so huge I always get lost, what are some of the things that I should focus both early on as well as later on into the game? So that's why I'm going to try to go over a full rundown of my entire routine whenever I'm starting a new playthrough. So if you enjoyed this, a thumbs up would be super appreciated and let's get to it. Now let's say you just started up the game, you just booted up and started on your first planet or maybe you're very early on. One of the first things that I actually like doing as soon as I wake up on any planet is to quickly stockpile some of the basic materials. These include of course the ferrite dust, carbon, dihydrogen and later on copper once I get the actual scanner because that is very useful for the chromatic metal. Most of the stuff that you will build in the early game and even in the mid game is going to require any number of these materials so what I do is I quickly stockpile at least a few thousand of these as soon as possible and this is so much faster now thanks to the overheat mechanic that lets you mine much much faster when you overheat your multi-tool. These aren't the only ones that I get and in fact as soon as I lift off on any planet I go to my nearest asteroid field and I start mining a little bit. There's a few tips and tricks here you can use in order to mine ultra quick in the beginning stages of the game and that is of course by using your ship's mining beam and not keeping the button press, instead just slightly tapping it. You will mine asteroids with extreme speeds and you will take hundreds if not thousands of materials in just a few minutes. Of course the most important of them all are the tritium which is useful to power up your ship and just use it to travel and then you will also get a ton of gold, a lot of platinum as well as silver and this is in fact one of my first money making methods in the early stages of the game. As soon as I take a few hundreds of this gold and platinum and silver I'm just going to my nearest space station and selling it and that brings me to about 100,000 units which should cover me the beginning of the game. From this point on what you should do is to just simply follow the main story missions, especially the ones regarding Artemis and his quest line. This has now been more streamlined, I've done this in VR and it is much better than ever before. A lot of the grind has actually been reduced, even removed, the quests themselves make more sense, they are much easier to follow and you will take less time than ever before to complete these, about 5 to 10 hours at most if you're just taking your time, but it is definitely very important to do these because you would otherwise not get some of the very important blueprints, base parts and a lot of tech upgrades that you normally get by just following the main mission. So this is something you will want to do as early on as possible. Also just doing the main mission brings you through a whole bunch of systems so this is also very important because you will get to discover a lot of new planets and for some reason many of the beginning planets look very beautiful. Some of the starting systems I think are kind of biased towards really beautiful lush planets or at the very least in my case most of the playthroughs that I've started all spawned at least one very beautiful lush planet that I could never find in the late game. Since we're still on the subject of the main storyline, one of the first things that will be required to do is to set up a base. This is your permanent shelter, your teleporting point, you can travel to it from any space station to it even if you don't have a terminus on your base and of course you can also use it as a means of making money. But before even jumping into making a mega base, you will need base parts. The main way to get base parts is by buying them from either the base computer archives by using the appropriate terminal or from the nexus itself. The skill trees are a little bit different but all of the stuff in them cost pretty much the same. So they all cost salvage modules. So how do you get salvage modules in the early game and what else can you do with it? There are two main ways to get these salvage modules to begin with. The most straightforward and easiest is to straight up go to the nearest space station and start interacting with the blue, orange and the black devices you find randomly on most of the tables in the space station. These drop randomly a number of salvage modules anywhere from 1 to 5 as well as a number of nanites and you can get about 10 of these really easily from your local space station at the very least to get you started. The second way to get them is of course from the planet surface and you use again your scanner in order to do that. So what you need to do is to search for buried technology. Once you find one go to it and use your terrain manipulator 
to excavate it and then grab all of the salvage modules inside. From here on, there's three main things you can do with the salvage modules themselves. So here's again three tips that we have. First, you can use these to unlock many of the base building upgrades. And this is the first thing that I recommend you guys doing in the beginning of the game. If you don't really care about base building and if you don't want base parts, at least not yet, the second thing you can do with them is to sell them for units. They are actually some of the most expensive items you can get early on and they sell for about 750,000 units for a full stack of 15 salvage modules. So that is quite tempting early on, you can make millions in just a few minutes by just going to your nearest planet and starting to search for buried technology. But again, as I was saying, try to save at least a few for just base building parts. Last but not least, the third thing you can do with them is to simply break them down into your refiner into nanite units. And if you don't have enough nanites, then this is definitely something you will want to do. Now if you went with the first route of just straight out buying base parts, then there's other ways of making money early on. And actually one of the best is to simply go into mines. Whenever you see something underground like a cave, a mine or anything, pay close attention to the rock formations because these are actually cobalt and cobalt sells for quite a lot early on a full stack of 250 sells for about 50,000 units caves in general are just a very good source of making money you will oftentimes come across humming eggs for example these sell for about five to nine thousand units each and if you get like a full stack of five that is almost 45 to 50,000 units for just one stack, which normally is something you collect in just a matter of seconds. From this point on, you probably got more than a few materials, you've probably got your multi-tool, your ship and pretty much repaired everything. The next thing you should be looking into is inventory size. This is one of the biggest problems that players have in the beginning of the game because you simply don't have enough. The good news is that there's more than a few ways to upgrade your inventory size and you can do this for both the regular exosuit inventory as well as for the tech slot and the cargo slots. There are three main ways to expand your inventory size in this game. Two of them are actually very very similar and the first and most easiest of them all is to simply go to your nearest space station on the left side of it right to the NPC that sells you upgrade for your exosuit. Right next to this NPC you will find a device and this device will give you one single inventory size slot that you can purchase from him. Do keep in mind that the more you purchase the more the price will increase. So eventually you will reach points where one inventory size increase will cost you about 1 million units. So this is something that you will want to do in the late game. In the meantime buy what you can afford. The second way which is pretty much the same involves the next or the space anomaly. It is exactly the same process except this time around you do it on a nexus in the back room right next to the NPC that deals again with the exosuit modules. So go to it and next to him you will find one of those devices again and repeat the same process. You can actually do this two times per system, one in the space station and the second time on the nexus itself. The third and final way involves drop pods and there's a few steps here that you need to take before doing this. Of course, first of all, you will need a signal beacon as well as a drop pod coordinate data in order to use it to search for your closest pod. Unfortunately, drop pods aren't really that easy to find. You can either buy one for 100,000 units or simply find one randomly on the planets. But later on in the game, it's way cheaper to spend 100,000 units than 1 million units to upgrade your inventory slots. Once you reach it, you will have to fill up some of the inventory over there to unlock the pod itself. And once you do that, you will actually get the inventory size increase. So you will need antimatter, so nitrate, oxygen, ionized cobalt and that's pretty much it but it is definitely much less expensive than simply buying it from the two NPCs I was talking about. Eventually as you move through the story itself after about the third or the fourth jump you will be rewarded with a mission, a bonus mission that requires you to rescue a freighter. This is the first time you will encounter a freighter and this is the first time the game gives you the chance to acquire one for free. So yes the first freighter you encounter and rescue will be be free. There's two things you can do over here. You can definitely take whatever freighter the game offers you and this is also something that I recommend you doing 
or you can hunt for a little bit right before the third jump and go into wealthy systems in the hopes that an S-class freighter might spawn and yes you can even get a maximum rank freighter that would otherwise cost hundreds of millions of units for free by just doing this mission but again that might be time consuming that is something that you will be doing in the end game anyway so that is why I recommend you take whatever freighter the game offers you and this brings me to the next tip and this is all about freighter missions or should I say fleet missions once you get your first freighter you will unlock the possibility to build up your own fleet so from this point on you can interact and purchase frigates you can send them into missions and these missions once you reach the end game they can reward you a ton of units a lot of materials a lot of exotic stuff and I'm not talking about just a few hundred thousand units I'm talking about millions worth of units and of course also very rare materials that you would otherwise need in order to construct all sorts of upgrades now since we were talking about the Nexus and talking to NPCs there's two NPCs you should always talk to on the Nexus whenever you already made a little bit of a journey in the game and discovered a few things one of the first is of course Helios he's the strange NPC which kind of looks like Groot a little bit and if you transmit him data such as for example creature data minerals and all that kind of stuff he will actually reward you nanites if you do this so there's a chance that if you have an old save file or if you already played and never talked to him that if you talk to him and transmit him the data Data, he will give you thousands of nanites and you wouldn't even know otherwise the same applies to Ares which is really close to him and go talk to this NPC and transmit milestone data this time around in exchange for a bunch of nanites again as you play the game you will get a lot of these milestones so just turn them into them and you will get thousands of nanites if you haven't done so already once you reach the part of the game where you have enough money enough resources your base is pretty much built up that is the time when you should start looking into S-Class upgrade modules. I've already covered that in a full video before so I'm going to post a link down below with the order you should follow but generally speaking go with whatever you use the most. So if you need survivability go with survivability modules such as something that increases your health or your hazard protection or even shields. If you want to go for damage increase your damage capabilities for your multi-tool including for the bolt caster or for your mining beam or whatever other combat modules you've installed and eventually even start looking into finding S class items again if you don't know how to do this there's even guides here on this channel but from this point you should start looking for a better ship for better multi-tools and this is going to cover quite a little bit of your time up until the end game and when you reach the end game when you're filthy rich hundreds of millions of units start looking into the freighter I was talking about once you have built at least a few bases got all of the S class stuff like multi-tool six ships all the upgrades for all of the inventories you can also start looking into finding the perfect planet or you can do this along the way it's your choice more often than not you will come across a perfect planet in your journey by simply following the main mission and last but not least of course soon enough we're going to have the community missions this is something that has happened last year as well and this is what will reward us the quicksilver that we need so there's going to be customization options at the quicksilver vendor there's going to be a lot of cool stuff that you can purchase to add on your base a lot of vanity items a lot of trophies fees a lot of cool stuff that can be set up that you would normally not even be able to get but yeah these are just some of the things that I do in my new playthroughs and I'm not always rushing I'm just taking my time having fun in the game so if there's anything else left tell me down below and in the meantime a thumbs up on this video would be super appreciated also don't forget to subscribe to the channel and activate that notification bell and I'll see you guys in the next one